So that's kind of what this topic is all about. Let's begin. If you haven't written these down already, do so. We're focusing today on geometric transformation, namely reflection and translation. So for each of these, this is what I'm going to start you off doing um, once I've got this list down here and I'm going to dash off briefly. If you are given a, a curve, so just graph it, x squared plus 5x plus 6, you know you have a mental image of what this looks like. You can see where its two um, x-intercepts are. How would you reflect that? Let's do this the easy way first. How would you reflect that vertically? How would you turn that graph into the same graph but upside down? What would you do to that? Okay, you would probably just take that and slap a minus sign out the front, wouldn't you? Okay, so we could write instead of y equals f of x, if you slap a minus sign all the way out the front like this, that's going to turn the whole thing upside down, right? Or a more technical way to say it, you're going to reflect it across the x-axis. Are you happy with that? Now, for reasons that are going to become clear in a second, I actually prefer writing this in a slightly different way. I'm going to write it like this. You might say that's weird. Well, hopefully by the end of this lesson, I will justify why I think that's actually a better way to write it. Okay, that's a vertical flip. It's a vertical flip. What if I wanted to flip it from this side horizontally across the y-axis instead of the x-axis? What would I do? Hmm. I expected to get to the end of the lesson. Maybe I'll now read the time that I do it. I think the minus sign belongs here. I can write it here, but I think it belongs here. Because what effect does this have? It's a reflection in y values. Do you agree with that? Like it's, it's ups and downs that get swapped around. So really, that minus sign is modifying the y. Actually, it doesn't really have much to do with the x at all. Okay? So therefore, it should stand to reason, if you want to reflect not y's, but x's, again, you're going to use a minus sign, but it's going to go in a different spot. Where is it going to go? It's going to go inside the brackets with the x, because that's the thing it's trying to muck with, right? So if you graphed instead of f of x, if you graphed f of negative x, and you can go ahead, like think about what's going to happen. When you put negative x into here, you don't need to write this down right now, but uh, what's going to happen to that x squared term? What's it going to become? Still x squared, that's fine. What about this term? What's that 5x going to turn into? Minus 5x. And that 6 just stays what it is. OK, think, think, think. What are the intercepts of this guy? Minus 2 and minus 3, as opposed to positive 2 and positive 3. You see, it, it did reflect exactly that we wanted to. Okay? So this is how you would horizontally reflect. That's fine. Okay. Now, remember I said I was going to revisit this absolute value guy? Well, in the same way, I could ask, just the right yep, OK? What would happen if I carry out a reflection by instead applying an absolute value to the whole thing. What would that look like? If instead of graphing this, I graphed the absolute value of this, what would it look like? That's not too hard to visualize. Yeah, all the, all the negative bits are gonna flip up. Okay, so you can draw that. You're actually quite good at that. Now, in the same way as I thought, okay, applying to the whole thing, here, I started mucking around with the thing inside. So what would that look like? Hmm. I'm less familiar with that. I can't simply chuck that in. I'm not sure what I would get if I actually did when x squared plus 5 absolute value of x plus 6. I'm not as familiar with that. How could you work it out? Okay. You, have a, you have a think about this. You'll have some time to work on it. I, in the same way, I'm going to go even more unfamiliar now. What if the absolute value had nothing to do with this right-hand side? What if the absolute value is over here? Hmm. I've never really done that before. What's that going to mean? I'm not going to ask you to put absolute values on both. No, I could. We'll get to that later on. That's all the kinds of reflections that I'm going to ask you to do. Okay? The first few are pretty standard. You can do them without my help. These ones in the middle, you can also work out with a bit more time. Those are the reflections. The translations are super easy. If I say, um, let's just go with one unit. I'll make it nice and simple. If I wanted to translate this one unit to the right, one unit to the right. How is that going to change this? This is going to be x minus 1, isn't it? Right? Because you can compare something like x squared, and you know exactly what that looks like, with something like x minus 1 squared, and that's just going over. So this is one unit to the right. What if I wanted to go one unit up, up and down instead of 
left and right. right. Okay, now I could say uh, this and then add one over here. Uh, but, but, remember what I said about like what's really being modified? What's really being modified is not the x, it's the y. Do you agree with that? So I think a better way, even though it's equally valid, a better way would to write this as this. Do you see that? You know how you have to kind of think backwards with this a little bit? You're like, oh, it's minus, but it actually means to the right. Well, it's the same thing here. It's a minus, but it actually means 